then we also investigate the basement cellar area, so that one was pretty cool. My light is turning itself You're up. Kidding. Oh my god. This is said to be the most haunted room inside this haunted hotel. Oh hello, we have a ball going off already. She fell down the stairs and she died here. Is there someone in here? Did you just make a noise? People, you know, see shadow figures or full-bodied apparitions all around the hotel. This looks like a death mask. Can you tell me who this is and why this is here? This device. Am I dead? I got that response. Last night I was investigating the morgue at Willow Court Asylum. What's that? I feel like earlier I heard Kylie come through. Film ourselves sleeping in the darkness of this haunted hotel room. Thank you for tuning into Amy's Crypt. I am currently sitting inside room six of the Bush Inn here in Tasmania, Australia. This is said to be the most haunted room inside this haunted hotel. And of course, we're spending the night and conducting a paranormal investigation. So stay tuned. The Bush Inn dates back to 1815 and is believed by many to be haunted. Countless visitors have spotted apparitions and shadow figures throughout the building. And many say that the basement is active with paranormal activity, a place that we investigated during my part one episode. However, no other area of the Bush Inn is said to be more haunted than the notorious Room 6. A young female is said to haunt this room after falling to her death down the nearby staircase almost 200 years ago. Many have claimed to see her and even communicate with her within this room. The following video documents the night we spent within the Bush Inn's most haunted room, number six. All right, Crypt Keepers, I just want to sit down, get comfortable and kind of introduce you guys to room six here at the Bush Inn. This is said to be the most haunted room inside the hotel, which I'm very excited about because the Bush Inn is actually quite an infamous, notorious haunted location here in Tasmania, Australia. And it is largely because of this room. If you guys haven't already done so, go and check out the part one video. I do a lot of the history of the Bush Inn over there and we also investigate the basement cellar area. So that one was pretty cool. My light is turning itself You're up. Kidding. Oh my God. Wow, that's never happened before. That has never happened before. Okay, that was really odd, so over there and we also investigate the basement cellar area so that one was pretty cool my light is turning itself You're up kidding oh my god over there and we also investigate the basement cellar area so that one was pretty cool my light is turning itself You're up kidding oh my god my light literally just you have to literally turn a dial on the back of i'll show you guys later on the back of my light to increase the brightness. Um, let me just see what it's on. It's on no, just bright. leave it. Too bright. That's really weird. Thank you for turning the light up if you thought I needed more light. Okay guys, so that was really odd. Uh, my mum is sitting over here. Hi guys. So no one's ever gonna believe that was like, that just did it by itself. They'll probably think it's you. I can't believe it myself. I can't believe it either, that's so weird. Now I've messed up all my framing. <laughs> anyway guys, so I was just gonna sit down, get comfortable and talk to you guys a little bit about the paranormal events that happen in this room. And yeah, my light just turned itself up. It's really weird because on the back of this light is a dial and you need to twist it to increase the brightness and it went from level 10 to level 35 and I mean you guys just seen that on camera and it was really really weird I've never known the light to do that uh, it is a newer light but I've used it enough times that I would know if it was weirdly faulty 
Anyway, we are sitting in the Bush Inn, the Bush Inn that was opened in 1815, so it is over 200 years old. It is very, very old. We are sitting inside room six, which is actually where we are going to be spending the night. And this room is said to be haunted by a young female. Now, most people say that she is a child, but lately a lot of the reports coming out of this room are that she's actually more of a young like adolescent. So I spoke to the owners earlier and they said that, yeah, this uh, young female might be a little bit more grown up than we've always kind of believed her as just being a very young, young child. Her background, her story and why she is here at the Bush Inn is that the staircase which is just outside my door which i will show you guys footage of she fell down the stairs and she died here and i'm not sure what her connection to room six is if it's she hangs around in here because it is so close to the stairs or maybe this is where she was living or this was where she was staying kind of at the time of her death but a lot of people just sleeping in this room have said that they've seen her. A lot of people have said that they've interacted with her in, in this room. And it's usually sighting her and then she'll disappear. So there are supposed to be a couple of spirits around and people, you know, see shadow figures or full bodied apparitions all around the hotel. And then they'll just kind of disappear. But a lot of stuff is said to happen here in room six. I actually... <laughs> Got a little bit of a surprise when I checked into this room. So I'm on a trip with my mom. We're on a, a bit, bit of a road trip. And when we walked in, we were like, oh, what the heck is on the desk? This is something that is unrelated to the hauntings and something I never expected to find in my haunted hotel room. Um, and I'll just show it to you guys because it will be easier to explain. This is just sitting on the desk. Now, to me, this looks like a death mask. And if you guys aren't familiar uh, with death masks, maybe go and watch my old Melbourne jail <laughs> video. We see a lot of death masks there. And basically what it is, is a plasticine mold of a human face after somebody has died. And that, I guess, is to remember what they look like, preserve their memory in a way. And it was a trend in a lot of old kind of jails in Australia during the 1800s to do a death mask for inmates that passed away, which I know is a little bit weird. The background of this, I actually asked the lady who checked us in and she didn't know. This face is a bit of a mystery. She said that basically what happened was a man checked into this room and he brought this along with him, I guess because when he left, he left this behind on the, on, on the counter here. I mean, they just thought, oh, okay, now we have this face in here, in room number six, the haunted room, whatever, we'll, we'll just leave it there. So now it's kind of become a part of the room and no one really knows whose face it is, where it really came from, its background. It may not even be like as sinister as a thing as it looks. I mean, I know it kind of looks like a giant potato from back here, <laughs> but this is somebody's face. We don't know who, who it is or exactly why it made it into room six here, but it's freaking creepy. And this is like, I'll probably title my video like I had did not expect to find this in my haunted hotel room. No way. Like I just, it is maybe one of the weirdest things I've come across. So what we're going to do tonight, I'm very excited that my light <laughs> acted as it did. I know you shouldn't be excited about your camera equipment malfunctioning, but who knows, maybe that is the ghost of this young female trying to make her presence known to me and say, yes, I'm excited that you're here. I want you to investigate room six. This is where I hang out. We're going to be sleeping in here, but we're going to do a bunch of different experiments and try and see if we can contact the young girl um, here at the Bush Inn, which I'm very, very excited about. So stay tuned, guys. So just to show you guys how this light works, this is the back of it currently on level 10. And this dial here, this is what increases the brightness, but you need to actually move it like this. So it went all the way up to level 35 when I was just filming that bit there. So, I mean, I'm not behind the camera, I'm in front of it. So I don't know if that physically twisted or not, but that was really weird and creepy. I've never known this light to do that before. If anyone has the same brand, I don't even know, that must be the brand. If 
If anyone uses the same lighting and it's ever happened to you before, leave me a comment because I'm not sure if, you know, why the heck it would do that. That is really weird. Keepers, we're just going to get set up for our first experiment. I thought I would lay out a bunch of the sensibles so if they're physically moved, they will light up. So I've got one on the chair, one on the, the foot of the chair, and then on the deaf mask, which I don't even know if it's a deaf, if it is a deaf mask, I have two balls on the face, like on the eyes. <laughs> and then I've just put a K2 meter out on the chair as well. I'm going to turn off the main light in this room, but I will be having my camera light on just because it acted funny earlier. So, I mean, maybe they will want to play with that light again. Uh, I'll flick this main light off and we'll just start calling out. Alright guys, I'm just going to start reaching out now. Hi, my name is Amy and I'm here in room 6 at the Bush Inn with my mother, Sonia. And I've heard that there is a little girl, or a young girl, young woman, who commonly comes into this room, and I just wanted to invite you in. I know this is likely already your home, and you spend a lot of time here, and you probably do get a lot of, of visitors, and I hope that it is okay that we are here, and we are staying. Oh, hello, we have a ball going off already. Now I don't know if that's you that just set that ball off, but thank you if it was. I have a couple of other balls here, one on the chair, and then two on the face that's just sitting on the dresser. If you go up to any of them and you touch them, you move them, you push them, they will light up. I also have uh, something that's emitting a green light right here on the couch next to me to my right. And if you go towards that and you go near that, that might uh, produce some extra lights that will be different colours. And you can make them go all the way up to red if you try really hard and go very, very close to this device. I don't know what's up there then. The light. Yeah, that sounded like the light, but the light is not on. <laughs> no. If you are here, can you please touch one of these balls? Maybe come and take a seat right next to me. Are you able to touch some of the balls that are on the face, on the dresser for me, please? There's a bike or something outside right now. Alright guys, so I thought I would just switch up things a little bit and just sit in this armchair again because earlier when the light went funny this is where I was sitting so I've moved two cat balls down here to up here on the, the weird face and I've just moved the K2. Um, I would love to call out to the young lady who is here at the Bush Inn. A lot of people have interacted with you and seen you inside room 6 and I would love to communicate. I would love to know your name. As far as I know, nobody actually knows this, this young girl's name. I would love uh, if you could tell me that. I'm going to put a device on which can be quite loud and I hope that that is okay. Maybe it's something that can help you to talk to me though. So don't be afraid to come close to me. I'm very friendly and maybe you can use this um, to share your voice with me. So again, I'm Amy and this is Sonia. Are you please able to tell me your name? Did you play with my light earlier? Did 
Did you make my lights go from 10 to 35? Have you been at the Bush Inn for a long time? I've been told you've been here for almost 200 years. What happened to you on the stairs out there? or a sad place for you? I feel like earlier I heard Kylie come through. Is your name Kylie? balls that I have around me. If you touch them like I touch this one and move it, then it lights up. Are you able to find the other ones that are in this room? for three nights. Do you, do you feel alright about having us here? Are you comfortable with that? Alright, so I've definitely been hearing some voices come through, but it's nothing really distinct and that jumped out at me that I could clearly distinguish in here. I felt like I heard the name Kylie come through. It wasn't after I asked what is your name or, or anything that would be really meaningful and relevant. It's also, I mean this sounds so choppy that it could have been something else so I'll have to review it and see what it sounds like in my editing. Uh, we haven't had any of these balls light up except for the first one. Um, so I'm not too sure if uh, she really wants to play with them or, or maybe, you know, she's not, it doesn't feel as comfortable. So we might try a couple of other experiments with the light off in the dark. All right guys, so we're now sitting on the bed. This is my mum, Sonia, for you I haven't met her yet. Um, we've left a bunch of those balls, those flushing balls over back there on the dresser, our face mask or death mask you should name name it potato potato head it's creepy <laughs> oh, it, it does look creepy in the dark it's actually nice. so creepy on the night vision okay so i thought that we would come over here get comfortable on the bed and kind of reach out so mum and i have actually spent a couple of nights here already we've been staying in the area of new norfolk uh, investigating Willow Court Asylum, which is five minutes down the road, and it's been amazing. So, this is. Oh, here we go. Thank you. If you are over there, just feel free to touch any of the balls at, at any moment. Oh my god, so I'm flushing the toilet. <laughs> this is our third night here, and then the first two nights we were. It was more just a place to sleep. We were in the haunted room, 
but we were flat out investigating the asylum and the asylum was really good wasn't oh, it? it was amazing Loved yeah it. when we finished uh, investigating the asylum we came back here and more or less crashed so the first two nights you said nothing happened to you right that's right yeah, yeah. i didn't sleep very well the first night well guys I'm waking up but this bed i'm sorry to say it's not very comfortable. <laughs> I think it's about 200 years old. It's that as was, old as the pub. <laughs> yeah, the pub's 200 years old, so is the bed. Yeah, that's what it feels like anyway. So uh, nothing really happened to you. My first night, I really didn't sleep very well at all. I don't know if it was the bed or what, but I did have weird dreams. And my dreams were kind of like, not like a normal dream that I would normally have. I had no characters or story. It was just like colors and shapes. And I didn't eat or drink anything weird like before bed. I mean, we would have had dinner before we investigated real early and then it was just water until I went to sleep. So I don't know what that was about. Uh, night two, I was kind of dead to the world. So I also thought that I wouldn't make such of an effort to try and reach out to the spirit until the third night. And then hopefully by that time, it's like comfortable with us. You know, yeah. hopefully she's just like, oh yeah, these chicks are cool. But I thought we would just sit here and kind of reach out. So if you are around, I hope that uh, you're comfortable having us here. I've actually bought something for you and I'm just gonna play you some music. Um, I bought my little music box along with me guys. So I'm just gonna play a tune. If you like it, uh, feel free to make a noise, maybe knock or tap on the wall. Maybe you can also light those balls up again on the dresser. Uh, this light back here as well is also a K2 meter, guys. So, I mean, if, if you feel like it, go towards that little green light on the dresser as well because I'm sure that you can make that light up too. All right. I hope that you enjoyed that. We really like this little music box. If you did, can you make a noise? Maybe you can come close to us and say something. Can you tell me who this is and why this is here? There's a big truck going by mm. outside. Semi. Can you tell me what year it was when you fell down the stairs? What caused you to fall down the stairs? So I might play some more music for you. I hope that's okay. If you do like the music, I'll play it again if you can light one of those balls up on, on the dresser. I 
I'd like to know if you're in the room, if you're able to tap on the wall, the sink, the door, the mirror, the window. That would let me know that you're here. Can you knock on the wall like this? Please? 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 Can you light one of those balls up on the dresser? You did it before. Go to the green light. There's balls on the dresser and they light up beautiful colours. Go and touch one of them. Alright guys, we've already had a few weird little interesting things happen in here. So I thought, again, we keep the lights off. And I'm going to run the ghost tube app and see if we get anything free. What's that? Oh, that was a bit creepy. That just came from the corner of the room. Yeah. If we get anything free. 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 That was like definite movement, right? Yeah. All right, so that was, I can't really see where I'm going, but that was over here. And you put the... That's weird. There's no one in that room next door either. No, no. Not, not that I, I don't think there is. Is this an animal on the wall or something? That was weird. Is there someone in here? Did you just make a noise? Can you come close to my hands? Maybe you can use uh, this device. Am to... I dead? Are you kidding me? I had that same question last night. So we spoke about this last night and I feel really terrible. Like, you, yeah, you might be, I'm, I'm sorry to say. I've, I've been told that you've been here for a long time and that you fell down the stairs. I'm really sorry if, you, if you're confused and you don't know why you're here. I can hear some guys out there. Mm. Just wanted to note that. Can you tell me your name, please? Did, did you play with the light on my camera earlier? I had a very bright light here with me. Did you turn the dial? There's a truck coming by. Your name isn't Kylie by any chance? How do you feel about being here at the Bush Inn? I hope that 
that you're happy here? I feel really bad that that question came up. That it, ha it has ha happened to me two nights in a row now. So, yeah, it's pretty full on, isn't it? Because... Yeah, well, I didn't know how to answer last night. Yeah, but now you do. And I just felt bad about it. I feel like the magnet readings in here are quite erratic. Are they? Well, they're going up and down. They're not going up heaps, but they're not really stable or anything. Can you tell me whose face is on this dresser? Oh, it goes up there, on the magnet reader. Who is this face? Why is this here? Can you tell me the name of that person? So again with that, am I dead question, I just feel really terrible. You know, it is sad to think that if a young girl did die here and fall down the stairs and she's been here for 200 years and she doesn't know why or what's happened to her. I mean, there's definitely the possibility that it's, uh, so this app, is it's kind of based on um, electromagnetic fluctuations, uh, that's how these uh, words are selected from a database and if the <laughs> fluctuations reach a certain like point then it can trigger a word from the database and magnetic north naturally fluctuates all the time guys so I mean there's definitely the possibility that that could have just been a natural sort of fluctuation that brought that up and not necessarily something a spirit manipulated. But I think it is also quite odd that two nights in a row I got that response. Last night I was investigating the morgue at Willow Court Asylum. And I don't know which episodes I'll air first or whatever yet, but it is very odd that that same response came up two nights in a row. That's quite, uh, you know, that's further away from a coincidence. But yeah, it's quite a depressing thought. Alright guys, we've done a fair bit of investigating tonight and as I mentioned, we've done the past two nights at the Willow Court Asylum. We were also investigating a couple of nights before that as well. So we are just completely wrecked, like so tired. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into bed and head to sleep. But I felt like because we're in the most haunted hotel room of this haunted hotel, we shouldn't in a way stop investigating, but a lot of people here have, you know, woken up to the sight of the, the female here, had weird things happen to them while they sleep. So I thought I'll go to night vision, put a new battery into my camera, a fresh one, and we'll just film ourselves sleeping in the darkness of this haunted hotel room. Hopefully something happens. I can't promise that, but let's, we may as well try, right?
Alright guys, so it's morning. We survived the night, but only just. So some really weird stuff happened last night. I don't know that the camera would have picked it up and I'm not saying it's paranormal, it definitely wasn't, but it was a little bit scary. So I think that the camera, by about the time this started to happen, which was, I don't know, almost 5 a.m., had gone dead and <laughs> we heard a bit of a commotion out in uh, the hallway just outside our door. So basically what had happened was I put our rubbish bin, or some of you might call it trash can, uh, outside of our room in the hallway while we were filming just because it looked a bit ugly for while we were investigating in the room and I forgot to bring it back in at night and then someone staying I think it was the person staying directly across the hall from us they must have woken up in the night and they came out into the hallway and we could hear them going through all of our rubbish like I was like oh my god they're gonna steal my banana peels <laughs> Uh, so they were going for our rubbish and then they were pacing up and down the hall and going in and out of their room And they did that for maybe an hour. I reckon they ruffled through the bin three or four times uh, But yeah, the camera was dead by that time The scariest thing though was I don't know maybe just after 6 a.m. Mum was like, I'm gonna get up to go to the toilet, but I'm scared because there's that person out there. I was like, oh, it'll be fine um, obviously you've seen how big this room is, it's small, it has a shared bathroom, there's not a bathroom in this room. So we were looking everywhere for the key so mum could go out and the key was nowhere. And then I realised, oh I had friggin left the key in the lock, in the door, so anybody could have come into our room, walked in while we were sleeping. So that's pretty scary to know that someone was out there going through our rubbish, our trash, and the key to the door was just right there. They could have just come in. Mum reckons that she heard them jingling the key, but I don't know. I think she's just saying that because she, when she found out the key was out there. But I think she was a bit angry at me because I was just so tired. I must have gone to the shared bathroom and then come back and just been so tired that I just left the key in the door. Oh, it's pretty bad, but we survived. I'm excited to go through the footage of what the camera uh, did manage to capture, and I'll be noting anything spooky that might have happened. But I do want to thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. That really, really helps me out. If you want to do a bit more reading about the Bush Inn or any of the other haunted places I have visited, head to my website, which is amyscrypt.com. You guys can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm there at amyscrypt. But thanks for watching, Crypt Keepers. Until next time.